Peace and welcome to another Bible study from the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. I am Teacher Jaden, and to my left, I have Elder Jason. Our names are very similar. <laughs> no, so um, if you are here for the first time, then go ahead and click that subscribe button so you subscribe to our channel so you see our videos. Also, like the video, comment, get involved in the live chat, and even share this with your friends if you feel that this is a topic that has moved you to want to share it and even share this word. All right. So today's topic that we've, that we've come up with is, are bad things or do bad things that happen in your life always come from, do they always come from the devil? Now, the reason why uh, we came to this today is because uh, basically, I'll, I'll tell you how it happened. Uh, I was on Instagram, uh, scrolling through Instagram, and then I saw a debate. And what it was is that someone was saying, all bad things that happen in their life, it comes from the devil. So you basically, you, you put in a bid for a house, you don't get it, oh man, mm -hmm. it's the devil. You go for a job, you don't get it, oh man, it's the devil. Uh, you rehear this stuff all the time. Like, what? Crush your car. Yeah. Like, <laughs> any, anything bad, like your parents... Someone died or, yeah. you know, it's all got to do with the devil. Yeah. Basically, every bad thing that happens yeah, in their life is always at the hands of the devil. Never any other factors. They, they don't look at any other factors, which we're going to get into today. Mm -hmm. Those other factors to show you that it's not always the devil. But yes, he has a role to play, mm -hmm. but it's not always the devil. So in the comment section, there was... Um, from what I saw, the majority of them were Christians um, and things like that. And there were basically mm. some people were arguing, yes, everything that bad that happens in your life comes from the devil. Mm. Everything that, um, and then some people are saying, no, conversely, well, keep that same energy when good things happen, mm. you know, when you always say that it's gone. Is it? They, <laughs> these are the conversations that they were having. Some and, people, and I guess they're all using the Bible, isn't it, as, right. as, as the reference, yeah. because, you know, everybody likes to base everything off of this, mm. you know, the whole life and everything. So, yeah, yeah they've got to be, like, maybe yeah. Christians, I would say. <laughs> yeah, there was, a lot, there was loads of Bible scholars in there, loads of Bible yeah, scholars yeah. throwing out mm. scriptures, like, you know, we wrestle not against mm. flesh and blood. <laughs> and mm. obviously, we, we've, we've um, gone into these scriptures yeah. plenty of times and actually shown the understanding of the scripture and where it comes from, what it means, who's mm. being spoken yeah, to yeah. And, and who it applies to and things like that, right? And I think if you're watching this for the first time, mm. I'm afraid that we're going to burst your bubble, <laughs> you know, because we are about the truth. We have been taught yeah. to understand um, spiritual things and physical things. Not all mm. bad things come from... Uh, Satan and God loves his own like your bubble's gonna get burst and if you was <laughs> I'm sure if you was to interact on the Instagram mm. you know everybody would be against you <laughs> yeah so but, what it yeah, yeah what, what, other, what other Jason's basically saying is obviously you will hear teachers from the Israelite nation mm. that are, are in opposition to mm. the worldly teachings that you will hear but fear not, don't, mm. don't fear, don't click X in your top right corner mm -hmm. or, or, or run away. There's reasons why, right? And, mm -hmm. and we always teach this. Many people claim to, to or many people teach from the Bible yeah. or, or read from the Bible, should I say. I wouldn't say teach. They, they read from the Bible and they try to teach people. But where, you, where the Israelite nation sets itself apart is understanding. Mm -hmm. So you will have things that you haven't heard in, mm -hmm. any, other, in, any, in any other establishment in the world. Mm. but you will see why when we get into understanding, you will begin to understand if you have the eyes to see and the mm. ears to hear, you will understand. So he saying you will have things, but you know, don't run, don't be scared. We will explain everything that we mean. Yeah, because right? I mean, like, we don't sugarcoat. Yeah, we don't sugarcoat. And they say the truth hurts. The yeah, truth does hurt. That's truth, why we tell it, but yeah. we try to make sure you know not that we're not trying to, yeah. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to sugarcoat anything. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so back to the lesson title. And um, for, the, for my brethren that are back again, uh, we hope that you guys enjoy this lesson. And, and yeah, newcomers, stick with us. Everyone stick with us as we as we get into this topic today because we thought I basically found this topic, called out to Jason and was mm -hmm. like, hey, this would be sick for us to do. Like, yeah. this debate's going off on Instagram and loads of people have their opinions and stuff like that. So let's put an Israelite nation mm -hmm. perspective on it, right? And I think it is true. I mean, I know you said that already, but mm -hmm. like, a lot of people do... Blame the devil for the, yeah, for, the for 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 the um, downfall in life mm. and stuff like that. So it is 
a good topic for you to really understand. And for those, if for those who were on Instagram are on here, or you do stumble across here, we're going to give you the answers of: Is it Satan? Is it God? Or is it just the world? Yeah. So yeah. Let's get into so it. let's get into this. Yeah. So don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> stay, stay focused. Stay with us, right? Okay. Where so are going to? do bad things always come from the devil? So the first scripture we wanted to go to. This is something that if you're if you're a repeat visitor here, you would have heard this story um, a few times. But we want to put a different spin on it today and actually, you know, correlate it to the purpose of our lesson. So we're gonna to go to Job, um, Job chapter one, verse six. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, shall I start reading? Yeah. Okay, cool, you're there. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, Job. Everybody knows Job. Yeah. Well, we assume everybody knows Job, but... Yeah. Yeah, okay, so just in case there is anybody that doesn't know Job, <laughs> just a quick brief, I'll just read verses 1 to 5, you'll get yeah. it. Anyways. So, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright. So, this is Job being spoken of, right? Uh, one that feared God and eschewed evil, and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. So he had ten children. His substance was also 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. So that was Job. Job was a perfect and upright man. A man who feared the Lord, who was the richest man in the east, had ten children. He's living a nice life. This was Job. <laughs> right. And verse 4 And his sons went and feasted in their houses And uh, every one his day And sent and called for their three sisters To eat and drink with them So all the children are in one house yeah. And it was so When the days of their feasting were gone about That Job sent and sanctified them And rose Oh gosh Yeah, sanctified and rose up early in the morning And offered burnt offerings According to the number of them all for Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So you can see the manner of man. This man is sacrificing just in case, right? And we've gone over this if I've learned other lessons a hundred times, so I'm not gonna, you know, reiterate that point too many times. But this is a man that is 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 perfect, right? So verse six, where uh, we was initially gonna start, it says, so to get into our lesson now. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Where, where did you come from? When did you come? When did you come? And where did you come from? And Satan answered and replied to God, saying, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Right? So as we can see, he's, he's looking for... To cause havoc, right? Yeah. Uh, I've taught that lesson before. He's in the earth causing havoc because mm. he knows he has a short time and things mm. like that. But here we can see, as we know, the devil makes work for idle hands. Yeah. Prime example right here. He's going to and fro the earth yeah, yeah. looking to do something, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yes, it, it does happen. Speaking to the point, yes, the, Satan is one factor mm. where bad things could go wrong in your yeah. life. He is, clearly. He's definitely right? 100%. Yeah. So, it says... And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, mm. that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear of God and escheweth evil? Which proves your point. Yeah. Yeah, that he has gone to and fro. He's gone here, he's gone there. You know, he's playing with that person, doing yeah. that to that person. <laughs> like, it's like, where, like, God, like, who are your people, man? Like, yeah, he's looking <laughs> like, for like, like, they're all corruptible. I could do anything to any one of them. <laughs> like, so this proves your point. So, so he says, yeah. So he's he's mm. gone through to and fro the earth, and he says, "Has thou considered my servant Job?" And you know, mm. the thing that sticks out to me is obviously the people online won't know this, so we'll explain it to them. Mm. But remember when Priest Freddie came down to England? And he re and he rephrased that sentence. Yeah. Has thou considered my servant Job? And he says, Well, has thou considered my servant Elder Jason? Yeah, yeah. Or has thou considered put that with your own name while you're at home, right? Yeah. And it really personalized the scripture. Mm. And then things will start to make sense in your life. You'll start yeah. to really put things into perspective, right? And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a mm. perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil mm. then satan answered the lord and said 
Doth Job fear God for naught? Does he fear mm. God for nothing? Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Mm. So it goes back to even what Priest Adler was saying about that spiritual mm. boma. Mm. That spiritual yeah, boma yeah, yeah, like yeah, hedges yeah. around the God of Abraham, around the God about the children of around Israel, children sorry. Around yeah. the children of Israel. He you you've protected Satan saying mm. to God, you've protected Job mm. on mm. every side. So there's nothing I can do to him. Mm. So it shows you who's really running things, right? Who's, so, who's so, the so, power. So, so, you, so <laughs> at the end of the day, he must have, when he's going to and fro, he must, he must have considered Job already, but he's yeah, like, oh, you I know what, I can't it. even get to yeah, Job. Yeah. So let me just go here, let me yeah. just go there. Yeah. Because he knows that Job is already protected. Because <laughs> Job, not unlike yourselves, right, he, as, as, it, as it was read inside here, he prayed day and night for everything and anything. You know, he prayed... For forgiveness for his children, for himself, he done that. Same just in case. Yeah. So the God of Israel knew who he was, and he knew that he was low. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that's a that's a great point as well. Mm. So, uh, I read verse twelve. Sorry, I got to read from verse eleven. So, um, yeah. So, Satan, as you said, Satan's mm -hmm. looking at Job like you've you've blessed him on mm -hmm. every side. How am I supposed to touch that? How, how am I supposed? What's the point of me going there? He, I know he's not going to waver in faith. He knows mm -hmm. that you have him. You have his back, right? 11. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will. Not even he might. He mm -hmm. shall. Mm -hmm. he, he may be. He's confident. <laughs> he's confident. <laughs> he will curse thee to thy face. Mm -hmm. And just Satan talking mm -hmm. to God, like, like if, you, if you let me put my hand on him, he's gone, man. Yeah, he's yeah, mine now. <laughs> because he knows, he knows yeah. what he's capable of. Yeah, exactly. And as I was saying, like, He's only out for big fish, but yeah, go on. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Mm. Now here, I'm giving it to you. Mm. Only upon himself, put not forth thine hand. Mm. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So what does God put, is saying... What does put forth not thy hand? So God is saying, everything that he has, mm. you can touch it. Now. Just don't touch him. Don't put your hands on him. Don't kill him. Yeah, don't kill him. Everything don't, around don't, him. Don't kill him, basically. Yeah. But anything yeah. else, you got free reign. Yeah, you got you got free reign. Yeah. And even and even as we read, mm. God even extends that to mm. you can now put your hands on him, but don't take his life. You know what's so, like, you know what's funny yeah. is that I'm already laughing in my head because I'm thinking about the people in your Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they might have just lost a job, or they might have <laughs> um, they got a debt collectors like three hundred pound, and like oh. <laughs> See, then, oh, it's got to be him. Yeah. And did you see what Job was going through? Mm. <laughs> and if not, if you don't know the story of Job, yeah, I like urge you to read it. Yeah, let's, let's get, we'll get into it quickly. We'll, we'll mm. read, like, some of it. Um, so, where was I? The... Uh, 12, um, 12, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I read 12, yeah, so 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were ploughing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and have burned up the sheep and servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and had carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and, oh, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. That's and while he was yet speaking, That's pressure. They, <laughs> That's pressure. That's pressure. It's pressure. <laughs> Let me keep going. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons... And thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of this house. And it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And then Job arose and rent his mantle, mm. shaved his head and fell down upon the ground mm. and worshipped. And said, naked came I out of my mm. mother's womb and naked shall I return there. Thither. And the Lord gave, the Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And, and you know what? <laughs> Look at that point right there. He didn't turn around and say, yeah, yeah. Satan, yeah. Satan came and, and wiped everything out. <laughs> yeah, he, did, yeah, he, did, he never said nothing like that. What did he do? He worshipped. 
Right. Wow. Exactly. Wow, that's a big wow. Mm. He did, did anybody use description? Did anyone make no, 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 He 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 worshipped. Yeah. That's a whole different ball game because mm. an average person or normally people they would they would curse. Yeah. Loads of Christians they would curse. They would say. Mm. It's got to be the devil. It's got to be the devil. It, 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 it has to be the devil, and they're gonna and yeah, and they will they will they will curse and curse and curse. And even Some the devil said that, right? Yeah, he yeah, said, yeah. He said to Lord confidently, if you allow me to touch mm. anything around him, mm. he will curse thee. Mm. But he didn't. And then Joel, unlike everyone else, everyone else's words on Instagram, mm. you know, you lose your you lose your house. Oh mm. man, it was Satan. Mm. You lose your job. Oh man, it was Satan. Or mm. someone. Someone could be 120 years mm. old, mm. ready to go, and that person will go, oh man, it was Satan, <laughs> right? But Job's first reaction was, mm. naked I come, mm. naked I shall return. The Lord giveth, mm. the Lord, Lord taketh take away. away. Didn't mm. say anything about mm. Satan first, so you can see the mm. type of man. When it goes back to saying that he was perfect, yeah. you can see how many people would do that. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So, again... In this situation, yeah, this supports the argument where it says, uh, you know, um, we asked the question in the beginning. We said, do all bad things come from the devil, right? Mm. Now, in this situation, Job obviously said, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Yeah. From what we read, he obviously, without knowing yet, yeah, yeah. knew that it was, it was Satan that yeah, had his hand in this. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't from God. And then, you know, the fire came down and everything mm. like that. But it wasn't from God. It was from Satan. Mm. So that supports the argument. Well, to, to, to a certain extent. To a because, certain extent, yeah. Because, 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 God, because allowed God is him. allowed yeah, 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 him yeah, yeah, to do it. Yeah. The God of Israel didn't allow him yeah. because he was worshipping the God of Israel, mm -hmm. then that would have never happened. Yeah. But exactly. he allowed him to, to that to prove his mm -hmm. point that you know what? Not everybody is like everybody of the world. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you wanna go into Yeah, let's go into um let's go into uh, uh, Judas, another point of where um Satan had his hands in um, in people's business. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want us to turn? Um, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 22. Hey guys, and while you're turning there, Luke 22, if you like what you hear, smash the like button, throw some sevens, throw some fires in the chat. Um, comment, you know, comment your opinion, your views and things like that. Um, and leave something in the comments after this video mm. ends as well. Yeah, so, yeah. do you want to go ahead? Yeah, so, so Luke 22, the verse, verse. Verse, verse? Yeah. Okay. says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover, and the chiefs, priests, and scribes sought how they might kill him. Jesus to talking about. Mm -hmm. for, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being one, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and, com and, and communed, with the, communed with the chief priests and the captains how he might be, how, how, how he might betray him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is another point, right? Yeah. As to say, Satan's got his hand in the killing or the setting up of Jesus, mm -hmm. right? And everybody knows about Satan and Jesus mm -hmm. and you know, and, and the betrayal and stuff like that. Yeah. So 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 and, and if we if we if we bring it to today's time now, Joel could have said it was Satan. Judas could have said Satan made me do this because mm -hmm. as you said uh, as you said it says then entered Satan into Judas. Yeah yeah. So he could turn around but if you just lose your your house is that is that enough is yeah, that enough exactly is that enough reason to say exactly and Judas didn't say that great yeah, yeah. point mm. uh, but is losing your house enough to mm. say that the devil done that or losing your job that's because see. they have no understanding so right they're, they're coming from they're coming from mm -hmm. this book where they read it and the person whoever's teaching them has no understanding therefore they don't have no understanding and anything that's bad happens to them it's got to come from Satan because yeah the way how they see it is that they're living by a by God's rules, his laws, but not not even God, Jesus' rules and Jesus' laws because that's who they that's who they serve, right? Yeah. But give some so so we jumped right in there, right? We jumped right into Luke twenty two. 
um, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which mm. is the, called the Passover and things like that. And he basically just said what what happened ultimately. Mm. Satan entered Judas. Mm. But just to give you some context to the story, just for those that do, let's do not to know. Mark. Let's go to Mark um, chapter 14, verse 43. Mark 14, verse 43. Yeah, you could read that. You want me to read it? Yeah, yeah. Um, just let me know when to stop, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas. So this is Judas with yeah, the yeah. Satan in, inside yeah. of him, as we just read. Yeah. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given, had, had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. Mm. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a mm. sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his mm. ear. You mean, sir? Yeah, you can stop oh. there. Because it's just, to, it's just to prove the point that of mm. what he did. Yeah. You know, he carried out, Satan did something and he, and he, he allowed Judas to carry it out. Mm -hmm. So that's a proof of what you were saying yeah, yeah, yeah. on Instagram that, Satan does have a part in certain things, things, but then yeah. at the same time, you've got, like, if you understand the Bible, if you've been taught properly about the Bible, you see that Satan's hands has only been on certain situations or certain people. Mm. It's certain people that was close to the God of Israel, something that would really disrupt um, Israel, not something that's going to make you lose your house. <laughs> you know, not, 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 not something that's going to make you lose your job or, or lose money from the bank. He don't care about that. He cares about, he goes for the bigger things. And you're basically trying to, you're basically mm. trying to say that there's a battle, mm. right? And that battle is between the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Yeah. And, and the devil is trying to, to challenge him. Mm. And you're basically saying that he doesn't care about your house and your job. He wants mm. to damage or stop you from joining his opposition yeah. his opposition mm -hmm. is the god of abraham isaac and jacob and his servants so you're basically saying that the, the devil targets those yeah. that are in opposition to his battle yeah yeah so if, if you're, you're not in opposition, opposition to then, his battle yeah. then he's not going to trust it, you it, it don't really mean anything whatever happens to you is of the world and we'll kind of like explain that as we go along but it's not him and it's not the god of israel like it's neither of them it's what it's what you do in life. Like you might have lost your, you might have lost your house because you didn't pay your bills, or you <laughs> you tend to go out partying every night and and use your money on 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 like on yeah. materialistic things when you should have been paying your 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 yeah. your household and mortgages devil's... or stuff like that. So is that the devil's <laughs> fault? No, that's your fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Your fears in order, yeah. but then it all goes down to mm. temptation. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Let's go to let, let's go to James, uh, James one, James one, yeah, yeah. great scripture. So um, that verse twelve, right? So if you guys could turn with us to James one, verse twelve, uh, we want to read something. So what we've established, just to keep you guys on this road with us, so no one strays or or goes off, and make sure that we don't digress. Also, mm -hmm. we um, what we're discussing today is every bad thing that happens. Does every bad thing that happened in your life? come from the devil does it mean that does it mean that he was instrumental in mm. every wrong thing that happened in your life right mm. so as we discussed we showed some um, situations we discussed Job. we discussed judas where yes mm. the devil did have a very uh, he was a very influencing factor mm. in those things that went wrong in those individuals mm. lives right but there's more situations and stories that we have to discuss and mm. things that we can bring up right to, to just sort of throw a spanner in the works so James one is something that we want to quickly read as more of like a, more of like a, a, a an understanding yeah, as yeah. opposed to a story. Did did and then people say that 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 God, um, had a hand in, uh, punishment? None of them said that. No. Oh. <laughs> so um, <laughs> okay. So James one verse twelve says, "Blessed is the man that endureth temptation." Mm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Wait, who, who, who can this be talking about? 
Like, we, just, we, 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 we just read Job, innit? Yeah. Great point. Great so, point. So, so then what happened, what, what happened to Job after? Yeah. yeah like, yeah. did he curse God? Like, that's something that you no. new readers would have yeah. to... You'd have to go read. back and read the story, yeah. Yeah, go back yeah and read and read and find out. I'm not going to tell you. Like, yeah. But did he curse God? Or did he continue to pray to God? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you think he did? That's homework. That's homework for next <laughs> week. <laughs> Put it in the comment section, see if you read it, right? <laughs> blessed is the man so, um, that endureth temptation. Go blessed on. is the man that endureth temptation. And you made a good point. Mm-hmm. You said, who is this speaking to? Mm-hmm. So something that we always urge you to do um, from as the Israelite nation, the standpoint of the Israelite nation, is we urge you to find out, one, who is speaking to who? Because that is an important mm-hmm. factor whenever you read scriptures. You have to understand that. Otherwise, you can you can go mm-hmm. off. You could think an Israelite speaking to a Gentile. Or you could speak an Israelite. It just, it, mm-hmm. you have to know, you right? Could, it's, you could think that an Israelite is speaking to a Gentile who you might think is an Israelite. Right. Because that's what we're so hearing. Much about, that's what we're hearing about. So much confusion So much confusion in this world, right? So when you go back to James 1, it says it. James, a mm-hmm. servant of God, Mm. and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. It says mm. it right there. So James, Let's and I'll skip, it. to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, mm. greeting, my brethren. Mm. So as you can see, now yeah. he's talking to, right? Mm. So going back to verse 12 now. Blessed is the man, because this is James having a conversation with brethren. Mm. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So I think we should just quickly talk about brethren and who brethren is. So <laughs> brethren, yeah. we're speaking about the children of Israel, right? Mm-hmm. So same, same we way. know that, exactly, we know that when Moses uh, was given the, the law, statutes and commandments, mm-hmm. it was told for him to go to the children of Israel, mm-hmm. right? The children of Israel, we know Jacob was surnamed Israel. He had 12 sons. Those mm-hmm. sons were known as the Israelites, the house of Israel, the children of Israel. So when Moses was given his instructions and told to go down and speak unto the children of Israel, he was speaking to that specific family. Yeah. So when we say brethren, and, and when you see brethren as who is being spoken of, everyone that you read, every righteous man, every wise man, is of those offspring of one of those 12 children. So Jesus, when you go up his lineage, his great, 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 great grandfather is Judah. When you go up for, uh, who's another one? You could go uh, Moses, his great, 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 great grandfather yeah. is Levi. Yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So this this is a story. So when you see brethren, that's why we always say family affair, mm. as you hear us yeah, say yeah, in the yeah. Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. And, and, and I think also that you have to understand is brethren is those who serve the same God. God. As you. And that's the those exact are Jesus' same words. God. And, those are Jesus and that's the same words. thing as your neighbour. Mm-hmm. Because I've seen also on on social media that your neighbor is the person who's got the same skin color as you. Great point. That that's ridiculous. Great point, yeah. So um the person who's next door to me because he's black, he's my he's 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 my neighbor, mm. like according to the scriptures, but that is not what it is. Mm. It's the person that serves the same God as you. That that person could be living um ten miles down the road in that one house. That is my neighbor. Mm. Another another neighbor could be the um the neighboring country. Yeah, that's next to our. That, that's that's next to us. He could be our our, our, our next neighbor because he served the same God as us. Mm. That is what the neighbors and it's the not your brethren is. Yeah, you're basically saying it's not your next door it's, neighbor. It's not your next door yeah. neighbor, and it's not your 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 skin yeah. color neighbor. Yeah, and you know, just I'll digress in quickly. Mm. Just digress quickly. Just food for thought. Um, you can search and. Um, scriptures like Ezra, scriptures like um, Nehemiah, Nehemiah, where it does say, you know, um, the children of Israel were there and mm. they was there with other black, with other people of the mm. same skin colour and they mm. couldn't tell by their genealogy which one was of Israel. Mm. That shows you that they were of different families, they weren't neighbours, but mm. they looked the same. So much so that you couldn't look at them mm. and tell the difference. So that tells you that not all people are the same. Not all black people are the same. Mm. Not all white people are the same. Not all yeah. Asian people are the same. Everyone has their own um, mm. families, where they mm. come from, who they serve, and things like that. It's a mm. nation, right? So, hey, we digress. Going back. <laughs> yeah. um, verse verse 12. 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Mm. Let no man say... When he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Mm. 
For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. For every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Mm. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, mm. bringeth forth death. death. Right? Powerful scripture. Mm. And we're going we're gonna to refer back to this. So keep a pin in that, guys. Keep a pin in that, guys, because we want to swiftly move on with our lesson as we're roughly half, we're, we're half an hour in right now. So we need to make sure we get through everything, right? So, yeah, I was just, so just to recap again, we're discussing, do bad things always come from the devil? We discussed Job, we discussed Judas, and then we read James 1. Now we're going to show other factors. Are there other factors outside of the devil that can make things go wrong in your life? Yeah. So, Jason, you have somewhere you want to turn to? Yeah, I want to turn to uh, First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Let's see what First Chronicles has got. First Chronicles, chapter twenty-one. And let you be the reader of this, and I'll stop you. Uh, what verse? From verse the what? first, yeah, from the first verse. Okay. So, what is this? So, we are now going to see if there's other factors. Because people, as you said, like to just like on use the devil, the devil in certain in every bad thing. Mm. But as we said, that we from the Israelite nation has to teach you the truth. Yes. Yeah, we teach you all sides. We're not trying to um, let you understand something by sweetening up mm. the, 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 the 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 stories that which you might hear on Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> not everything is bad comes from the devil. Are there other factors? Well, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So, verse one, you said, yeah. So, yeah. First Chronicles chapter twenty-one, verse one. Mm. And Satan stood up against Israel, and mm. provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab, and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Beersheba even unto Dan. And bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Okay, stop there. Mm -hmm. There's a homework. It's in here anyway, but knowing people, they're going to read past it just like the God of Israel's name. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. like, just like you'd, you'd read the whole thing and I'll say to you, so what is the God of Israel's name? I am. That's his name. No, it doesn't, it's not that. <laughs> so you're more likely going to read past it. But... The homework is, is Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Why is that so bad? Like, I don't know if they'll be able to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, but that's, this is your homework. Why, why is that so bad? Like, why did Satan provoke David to number Israel? Yeah, that's your homework. And if you do find it, put it back in the chat. At some point. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what did I read? Verse 1, right? I just read verse yeah, yeah. No, no, I read verse 2 as well. Verse two, so, yeah. verse 3. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as mm. they be. But, my Lord the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then doth my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Mm. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Wherefore, Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the... Okay. So, it's just a quick stop. So, obviously, you've got Joab. He sees that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Did you see the problem? He's seeing that there's a problem. He's saying, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the king is the king. Yeah. You can't go against the king. You still yeah. have to like do what you have to do, right? So... Do your homework. Let's see what you say in the chat. <laughs> and uh, just to give you a hint, we've already passed the answer as well. We've passed the answer one bit that you can use. Um, so where am I? Verse 5. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David, and all they of Israel were a thousand, were a thousand, thousand, and a hundred thousand men that drew the sword. Mm. And Judah was four hundred, three score, and ten thousand men that drew sword. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, mm. for the king's word was abominable to Joab. Yeah. 
It's abominable. That's a strong word. Very strong word. So, so it was, it it was burning job that he had to count them. It was burning. So, if that is burning job to go against the king's rule, then Satan knew what he was doing. And remember, Satan. In the thingy, in the first verse, he said, and Satan stood up against Israel, not against the Philistines, the Jebusites, the Christians, the Muslims, not against none of them people there. It was none of them. It was only Israel. Yeah. And we're going to get deeper into our points. <laughs> but yeah, go on. Okay. And God was displeased with this thing. Mm. Therefore, he smote Israel. That's so that's, that's a bad thing. Yeah. That's a bad thing already. <laughs> Did it come from Satan? Who mm. smote Israel? Yeah. I read it again. And God was displeased mm. with this God thing. Was displeased, yeah. yeah, one more time. And God was displeased mm. with this thing. Therefore, he, being God, smote Israel. What, the, what does smote mean? Does that mean like, you know, like in, back in the days when the, when the person takes out the, um, the glove? And they're doing the jewel and they just slap you with a girl. Like, <laughs> is that the type of smoke that he's talking about? No. No. <laughs> Killed. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly mm. because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have mm. done very foolishly. And then you have to go back to verse 1 again. Satan stood up against Israel. And what was his reaction? Did he say... The devil made me do it? No. He didn't <laughs> say the devil made me do it. He said, I've, I've done it. Temptation. Mm -hmm. Temptation. What, 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 what if he went against that? Mm. that? That temptation. What if he said, no, you know what? Then bless I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm still not going to give you the answer because I really want someone who sees this video to put their answer in there. Mm. Yeah. Um, it goes back to what you just asked as well. goes back to James. James yeah, yeah, read. yeah. He, and he, what happened if he would have? It said, "Blessed, mm. blessed is he that that overcome temptation." Yeah, temptation. It's essentially, paraphrasing, right? <laughs> um, verse nine. Mm. And the Lord spake unto Gad, David, see us, saying, "Go and tell David, saying, mm. Thus saith the Lord, mm. I offer thee three things. Choose the one of them that I." May do it unto thee. <laughs> it's like that. It's I like, may do it unto it's, thee. It's like that. It's not speaking. <laughs> it's like that. It was, it's like as a child, like you know, Caribbean yeah. people were like. Yeah. Which one you want the belt? Yeah, yeah, you want the yeah. You want, you want the belt? You want the belt? The stick or, or, the or something else? And all of them are bad. Where you're like, I've, I've got to take the punishment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I think the key thing that we notice here as well mm. is the Lord spoke unto David Seer, mm. saying that. I may do it unto thee. Mm. So again, where people say that the, the, yeah, the yeah, devil, yeah. the devil did this, or the devil did that, mm. or this, or, or whatever it may be, mm. this is three punishments here to choose from. The Lord mm. saying, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So, where am I now? Uh, 11. 11. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, choose thee. Either three years famine, or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, mm. while that the sword of thine enemies overtake thee, or else three days of the sword of the Lord. <laughs> mm. okay, wow, so the sword of the Lord, even pestilence, I'll just pestilence, even pestilence mm. in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Mm. Now therefore, advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. This is horrible. That is... Terrible. It's horrible because <laughs> it's it's a thing of you got the king and I, and I don't know if I said it, but I'm, I, I don't I don't want to say really what it is. But you got the king. No, no, I didn't say it. So you got the king who numbered Israel. Job knew that it was a bad thing. Why it was a bad thing? That's for you guys to figure out. Um, but at the same time, the God of Israel is like okay. Satan is not going to punish nobody. There's this not anything to do with Satan. Yeah, as, to why, to do with Satan. as to why, what's going to happen next? Mm. So he's given him four things. Three. Is it three things? Yeah. I'll say he's given him three things. But it's not just affecting him. 
it's affecting the whole entire nation of Israel. Yeah. How many, <laughs> how many, how, like before, how many did he count? He counted a hundred yeah. of thousands, another, a thousand or a thousand of this tribe and a thousand <laughs> of a hundred of this tribe and, a, and all of this and all of that. Like there's thousands of them, there's hundreds and thousands of Israel. It's affecting every single person. The person, you might have people that's just sitting inside the house and they've not done a bad thing. <laughs> They've not done a, a bad thing and, whoa, what's about to come or what's about to happen to them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's a horrible thing and it'll be that thing of, what will they say? Yeah. Will they say... That it was the devil? Will they say it's the devil? But will they say it's, it's the God of Israel's hand? And that's a good point that you make, right? The reason why that's a good point is because there are still people that won't yet be convinced... Purely because verse one says, mm. and Satan stood up against Israel. Mm. So they'll say, okay, yeah, but if Israel punished him, but say it was Satan's doing. Satan mm. made David number mm. Israel, mm. right? So he had some influence. Yeah. But then at that point, when you're faced with temptation, when we go back to James one, mm. blessed is he. I'm paraphrasing. Blessed mm. is he who overcome temptation. Mm. Right. So. Once you make it through, if or if you don't mm. make it through, the punishment, is that coming from Satan? Mm. Did the punishment this time come from Satan? Oh, he just tempted you to do wrong. Yeah. You see? And I think as well, because I'm, 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 I'm thinking about David and remember David and Goliath. Yeah. Like, um, was that only David's doing? Yeah, exactly. Was that only, was that him that, that killed Goliath? Was it only his doing? Mm -hmm. So... David really should have thought about what he was doing and not be tempted. Yeah. But then it's easier said than done, but we're reading the story. <laughs> yeah, it's very much easier said than done. Right? <laughs> no, I go, um, Karen, where, where, where do you want me to read from? Where, 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 uh, where did I Karen reading, we're going to read up until 18. Where did I stop? Um, oh, yeah. Verse um, 13, 12, 12, 12, I stopped. So, even going back, actually, sorry, just one more thing to add. Again, just, just going over that point. Oh, did I read 13? No, no, you didn't read 13. You read from 12, so you don't read 13 now. 12, yeah, sorry. So, going back, it says, um, or else three days of the sword of the Lord. So just, I just really want to highlight that point as we move forward. Mm. It's the sword yeah, of the yeah. Lord. It didn't say, oh, well, you know, um, the pestilence is going to come in the land and the angels are going to mm. come and, oh my God, mm. Satan did this to me. Mm. No. This is at the hand of the sword of the Lord because you did wrong. Mm. That's the. I just want you guys to just hold on to that point as we continue through the lesson, because mm. that's the main point we want you guys to hold on to, right? So verse thirteen, and David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, mm. for very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of a man. Well, what will man do to you now that you're Israel? <laughs> what will man do to you? <laughs> Wow, <laughs> he's scared of man. He's like, no, man, no. <laughs> yeah, man, man, they don't have the same. They got Israel have compassion. That's what he's hoping for, right? Yeah, he's, he's, he's praying for compassion because I mean, at the end of the day, he serves the God of Israel. He loves the God of Israel. He's done the one thing wrong, which I'm still hoping that somebody puts in the chat. No, no one, nobody <laughs> Israel, because then someone else is gonna get the answer. But um, yeah, yeah, he 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 knows that he's done wrong. Uh, and he could only really go to the punch um, to the God Israel because, as you said, like he's merciful. Mm -hmm. He can't become merciful to see his servant get punished. Knowing that you know what, his servant really does love him. Yeah, you know, but he's just right. done that one wrong thing. Yeah. So, where did I stopped at? Fourteen. Do you want me to yeah. read on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Read on to eighteen. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell off there fell of Israel seventy thousand men. And God sent, sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing hold of Ornan the Jebusite. And you know what? It just shows the God of Israel. As it says, there's a time for everything. There's a time for good. There's a time for evil. Mm. The God of Israel has angels that mm. will come down and wipe. You look at the angel yeah, of death. Yeah, yeah, he, don't he has an angel yeah. of death mm. that works on the payroll of the God of Abraham, mm. Isaac, and Jacob. Like, you get what I mean? Mm. Like, 
Say pain or whatnot. You can't do nothing. You can't <laughs> sway him. Yeah. You can't. Satan, that, Satan yeah. can't say anything yeah. to him. Yeah. Like he's just it's that tunnel vision, isn't it? Like. And the key thing to note is that it's an angel of death, mm. so something that kills and takes yeah. life, yeah. but it's not owned by, it's not controlled by Satan. Yeah, yeah. It's, at, it's at the beck and call of the God of Abraham, mm. Isaac and Jacob. Mm. That angel moves at the beck and call of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Mm. But people would say an angel of death is an evil thing. That is Satan, I rebuke it, yeah, it's Satan. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not Satan. Mm. <laughs> and it doesn't stop. It Why are you giving him so much power, man? And it, and it, said that, like, it just won't <laughs> stop. Yeah, exactly. He won't stop until the God of Israel exactly. like so seeing, stay now that hand. Yeah, yeah, because he's seeing like he's seeing he's seeing these people getting like like yeah. like wiped out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dropping, dropping like flies, man. Um, Sixteen. Yeah. It's like the, it says, the flesh is like a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. Yeah, you know. Um, and David lifted up his eyes, verse 16, mm. David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched mm. out over Jerusalem. Imagine the sight yeah. of the I need to read that again. And, and, the, thing, and the thing is, <laughs> yeah, and this is, this is a funny thing, it's not happening to David. Yeah, because he's still yeah. alive. It's well, he's, David's feeling the, the pain of his people, he loves his people. He's feeling the pain, but he's there, just got to sit back and just think about it. You're, you're the king and all your family members, all Israel, and because of what you've done, all yeah, Israel exactly. is just getting whacked. Yeah. The guy, the angel of the Lord, just got the sword and just like, zoom, thousand people dead, zoom, another thousand people dead, and then you're just sitting back thinking, because I numbered Israel. <laughs> and this is, God that, this is the God that Israel, this is the God... From Genesis, who created the heavens and the earth, mm. he created everything inside of it. Yeah, yeah. This is a punishment that he is dishing out to David's people because of what David did. Mm. Yeah. And a key point to note as well, bringing it back to the lesson is, mm. the people were numbered. Yeah. Would they have turned around and said, "Oh my gosh, the devil is killing us"? Yeah. The devil is killing us. But who? Who the, those that basically that's bad have, that happened to them. No, I'm not saying they, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm agreeing with they wouldn't, but they it happened to them. A bad thing happened to them. They died. Yeah, yeah. 70,000 people are being wiped out, mm. yet they can't turn around and say that that's at the hand of Satan. So, the, mm. what what it goes back to the point do all bad things come from Satan? Exactly. No, what was it in this? It was that David did wrong, so the punishment now. Mm. came from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because David is of Israel. And the punishment was a stiff punishment. Let's carry on reading before yeah. we run out of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? Um, well, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. Oh, it's just, so imagine that. I wanted to read 16 yeah, yeah, again, yeah, yeah. because just, just envisioning that must be scary, yeah. man. Like, mm. David lifted up his eyes, verse 16, and saw mm. the angel of the Lord standing mm. between the heaven and the earth, having a drawn sword mm. in his hand, stretched out over Jerusalem. No, 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 no one else saw that. <laughs> Imagine if you think that, about it, no one yeah. else saw it. David was only able to see what was going on. Mm. No, no, one else, that, no one else saw, saw what was happening. Mm. That's just and that would, gave, that would have gave them the choice to say whether or not it's Satan or if it's God. Scary sight, though, right? That's a scary, scary sight. That's... Uh, the, that's <laughs> Then David fell, and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Mm. Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Mm. Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not upon thy people, that they should be plagued. Mm. And they would have been sad. They would have been. They would have been seeing each other yeah. cry. They would have been seeing each other mm. die and been like, "Wow, why is this happening to mm. us?" Mm. But it was not at the hand of Satan. Mm. That's the point. Yeah, that's the we want to make. It was mm. not at the hand of Satan. And you got to think about it. Like after all these people dying and stuff like that, like they've got to rebuild their lives. Mm. You see, what I'm saying so. In in today's world, you see um, uh, pe people dying, dying. They will be like, "Why is Satan?" Mm. It's, it's Satan, like, why is Satan, why is this happening? But you, 
You don't know the reason why it's happening. But people even blame other things, mm. like even when you go into slavery. Yeah, I'm going to go into slavery. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, slavery, slavery is another point. Slavery is another point as to where was it Satan? Because you got to remember you that like back then when we see the movies, people who grew into slavery would 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 say, oh, oh it's got to be the devil or 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 I must it must be it must be my genes that I must be a slave or anything like that. I've heard that. They before. they they never saw or never knew that it was down to their forefathers as to why they're in that state and they was in that state for 400 years. And you're right, and, it's not, it's, and, and the thing is that it's not even, it's not even really until Elder Shadrach started speaking about this in the early 80s, um, letting people know that, you know what, we are the children of God. Mm. Yeah, we are the children of slavery. It wasn't the white man that put us into slavery. It was of our own doing while we're here. Yeah. Why the God of Israel punished us. The God of Israel, the God who created the heaven and the earth, punished us. Mm. It wasn't Satan. It was our own greediness and our own um, jealousy and seeing what other nations got. And oh, I want to be like that nation. I want to be like that person. So the God of Israel was like, okay. Let's go into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why we always read um, Amos, right? Yeah. That's why we always read Amos 3. So you want to Amos? I want to go into Jupiter. Um, you want to go to Jupiter first? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Deuteronomy so, where? 28? Yeah, let's go to Jupiter. I mean, 28, the first, the first verse. I just wanted to just quickly touch on a few scriptures. Okay. And if you're yeah, and if you're liking the message, guys, throw some fires in the chat, throw some sevens in the chat. Mm. Um, let us know you're enjoying the lesson. Let us know you're on the same page, mm. keeping on this road with us, and that you agree. Okay, so Jupiter twenty eight, the first, the first verse. I'm not going to read all of it. I want that. I want this to be your homework for the newcomers. You read it. If you've never heard that Israel or black people was cursed before by by God as to why they was in. Slavery for for 400 years, I'm going to hear it here for the first time, and I want you to read Deuteronomy 28. So, from the first verse, it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord shall set, that, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of this earth, and all these blessings shall come upon thee. Yeah, so that's the blessings part if you live by his laws and his commandments. Yeah, what does 15 say? Let's see what 15 says. 15 says, uh, yeah, so that part you will hear all the blessings. This part here, you're going to hear all the curses. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe. To do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Mm. This is the God of Israel speaking. Yeah, for all your Instagram um, people then. <laughs> right? This is the God of Israel speaking. It's not Satan. This is of your own doing. Mm. Yeah, this is because of you. Yeah, that's 15. So you got the first verse which says... Here's the blessings. You've got 15 that says, here's the curses. Mm -hmm. So then now we're going to go to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Which says, And the Lord shall bring thee into ships again. No, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by whereof I spake thee, and they shall see, and they shall see it no more. And they shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no one shall buy you. I mean, obviously, if you read the whole scripture, then you would see the curses because you disobeyed God. Yeah, so then that part there is the part of the first starting of your 400 years. Because this is what you chose. Let me, let me jump in here as well, right? So, for those that have never heard this before, 
mm. and maybe banging on your TV screen now. Like, what are these guys talking about? The God of it, the God doesn't, God doesn't do this. God doesn't mm. put you into uh, slavery and do this and do that. Do you want to turn to Amos three? Yeah, yeah, they, they they bang on their screens or could be banging on their screens and saying, what are these guys talking about? No, I've never heard. No one's ever taught me that punishment or or, or being mm. a, a bond man or a bond woman is is a punishment from God. Why why are you teaching me this? What does that mean? You know, um, Elder Jason has sent you, he, he went to Deuteronomy 28 in the beginning and he showed you the blessings. He went to verse 15 mm. and he showed you the curses. Um, I'll just quickly read this while, uh, before he, uh, Elder Jason reads Amos 3. Read this it says, mm. yeah, I'm just, just going to read like two verses. It says, then this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel, right? So I'm just we're adding some um, context now so you get mm. why we read that. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, mm. and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Mm. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. So there are curses that come from not serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob mm. if that has been granted unto you. That does not mean that those curses are at the hand of the devil. Mm. And I will get a deep, bit deeper into that. Do you want to go into it? Um, yeah, because that, as we said, that was only for Israel. Right. Okay, so if we go to Amos 3, um, it says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, mm. the whole world. <laughs> yeah, the God of Israel, who created heaven and, and the earth, has spoken against you, the whole world. I'm sure you see that in the new... Um, international version of the of, of the Bible. Yeah, that's what they're saying there, but it doesn't say that here. It doesn't say that in here. <laughs> in here, it says, "Hear the word that the Lord has spoken against you, all children of Israel." Yeah, yeah. It's He's like, only yeah. pinpointing out yeah. this one people. Yeah, and yeah. it's so that when people read it, there's mm. no confusion. Yeah. If they say, exactly. "Hear this word that the Lord said unto you." Elder Jason, yeah, yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, there's people here that yeah, may yeah, hear yeah. this, and I need to know that yeah, I'm not yeah. speaking to yeah. them, I'm speaking to you. Yeah. I'm speaking to you, O children of Israel. Mm. Okay, so, against the whole family, which I, the God of Israel saying, I, yeah, in Genesis, the God of Israel created the heavens and the earth. He's saying, I <laughs> brought you, brought up the so, against, against against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, yeah, from the land of Egypt, we know the whole story of Egypt. Mm. Saying, and can I just stop you there as well? Okay, that's a, everyone knows who the God. They know who was with Moses yeah. when they came out of Egypt. Everyone knows that. You hear that in songs. I've heard that in songs yeah, yeah. nowadays. Um, you see so many films yeah, of Prince of Egypt, yeah. the Ten Commandments. You know. So they, that's they, the people that he's talking about when he mm. says, it brought you out of Egypt. Yes, Moses was with them, but it's the people, it, the God of Israel allowed that mm. to happen. So, I think a lot of people do read Amos 3, but they just read past it. Mm. And they apply yeah. Christian yeah. for Israel. <laughs> okay, so, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, You, Israel, only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Oh, is that what yours says? I thought yeah. man said, Therefore, Satan will punish you for your iniquities. Yeah, well, yours does say that. <laughs> not no, see, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Mm. God, God says... You, Israel, only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I, I will punish, punish you. you. Not Satan, mm. not, oh, this bad thing is going to happen in your life because you didn't follow my rules, therefore Satan's going to come and punish you for me. Why would Satan do that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's funny because you might not even, even really try and understand families mm. of the earth, but if he's talking about Israel, then you've got to see um, Egypt mm. as a family because he said that um, he bought out um, the children of Israel out of Egypt. So Egypt is a family. Mm -hmm. Israel is a family. You, you, if you know the story of David and Goliath, Goliath is a Philistine. The Philistines was a family. Yeah, a nation of people. Yeah, a, a nation, yeah a, a nation of people. So you had nations 
of people in the earth. The God of Israel knows that there's thousands and thousands of people in the earth, thousands of nations, like um, there were hundreds of nations. And then even today, there's there's got to be 10 times more people in the earth than there was back then. It's been populated, right? Yeah, and he's, <laughs> uh, he's only punishing yeah. Israel, yeah, yeah, because of what they've done. Great. Not Satan. <laughs> Great points. And while you're on that... Satan got no punishment. Yeah. So... Going off what you said, we spoke about mm. um, the God of Israel punishing us, right? Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. And as I said, it didn't say Satan. So going back, the title of the lesson is, is, is Satan the reason as mm. to why every bad thing is going wrong in your life? No, he's not the reason why every bad thing is going wrong in your life. So you stop blaming him for everything. He doesn't mm. do all of that, right? Sometimes it, there are other factors. Sometimes it can be us. The God of Israel says, as you've read, he will punish us for our iniquities. That mm. means that we have a way to live by and we will be punished if we don't. It doesn't mean Satan's going to do that to you, mm. right? So with that being said, when we go to Judges, we see this a number of times. And I'm not going to stay here long. I'm literally going to be flicking pages like this mm. just to make my point very clear, right? Judges 2, verse 11. I'm going to go fast with this, so please keep up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you just jump into there, I've yeah. just got to just throw one more thing in there yeah, on. after Amos. Mm -hmm. right? um, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. It's, it says, and the, and the Lord by God shall bring thee into a land where thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the, Hid, the, the, the Prevazites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. Israel. Yeah. Like we are a mightier than, than you, Israel. So obviously there was many other nations, but he didn't care about the nations. He pushed the nations aside. And do, yeah. you, know what, do you know what, as well, <laughs> as you read that, right, and I put it in perspective of this lesson, mm. the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Jebusites, the Parasites, the Canaanites, all yeah. those nations, right, mm. What would they have been thinking? Oh man, Satan, Satan, what is he doing to us? <laughs> well, who done it? Who done it? Whose hand mm. was that of? That was the God of Abraham, mm. the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, who mm. made us go and wipe out these nations. What did Satan have to do with that? Mm. But, that then, but, but then also, I need to throw in there too, is that you've got to realise that you've got seven, is, is, right there it's mentioned, seven nations greater, greater and mightier than you. So, Let's pick up one of the nations. Let's pick up the Gergesites, one of the one of the great greater nations. That is a nation of people that serves a God, yes. not the God of Israel. So through them serving a God, this great, massive, big nation, buildings, um, marketplaces, uh, synagogues, what, 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 yeah, established community, what, yeah. what, what have you, thousands and thousands of um, thousands of, of, of inhabitants. Mm. Yeah, they're living their life. You've got rich people in the Gurga side, you've got poor, poor people there. Well, wait, where's the blessings coming from? You've got people that the were Israel don't know good. them. Yeah. You've got people that were thought they were good. Because yeah, in this yeah. world, it's, you know, if I if I live good, then I'm, I'm fine. What's yeah, live you, good? You, you, would, you, you would have had good people there. You would have had people that, <laughs> that would give to the poor inside, inside the Gurga side town. You know, they give to the poor. They, they you know, they do the, the so called charities. You know, um, they had the, they imprinted their God, and you had rich people there as well. You know what I'm saying? So, where did they get this from? The God of Israel, done, he didn't even know them. Yeah. He, 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 he don't know them at all. Where they getting, where, <laughs> where, where, where they getting the blessings from? I'm, I'm a bit confused. Yeah. Well, I'm not confused at all, but like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it's just a no, for you yeah, to... That's, a food, that's food for food thought, for right? Food. So, going back on this track now, right, of who we established, yes, the devil has his hand in some times, right? With yeah. Joel, with Judas... The devil sometimes just throws a spanner in the works and it's up to you. Mm. That's another factor. And then the God of Israel will punish you like we see with David. He stood up, Satan stood up against Israel. And then it was on David what, he, what choice mm. he decided to make next because he would, David, uh, the Satan didn't enter him like yeah, he yeah. entered Judas. Yeah, yeah. So it was, up, it was all up to David from mm. there, right? Where the God of Israel would then punish you next. Now there are other factors where sometimes he has zero hand in it and it is solely us yeah i'm gonna go fast with this guys keep up yeah yeah exactly deuteronomy yeah. and then yeah. here now as well 
There's more times, but I'm only just going to go to like six or so. Judges 2, verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baalim. Right? Next. Judges 3, verse 12. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Each time we're putting into some form of enslavement. So we enslaved in, in Judges 2, enslaved in Judges 3, Judges 4. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. When, Uh, when Ehud was dead, you have to read on to see where we was enslaved. I'm going to skip forward. Judges 6, verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the, into the hand of the Midian seven years. So there you see it, we was enslaved seven years, right? Was that the work of the devil? No. Mm. Who done wrong? Children of Israel. Mm. Judges 10. I'm just skipping now, guys. Judges 10, verse 6. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Baalim and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served not him. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines. Sold us, the Lord sold us into the hands of the Philistines. Man. <laughs> into the hand of man. David did not want that, right? Mm. And verse th- chapter 13, verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. That's 40 years of enslavement. You tell me where the, where the devil had anything to do with that. Nothing. Nothing, right? Nothing at all. That's your, own, that's your own doing. That's based on us. So, yes, bad things will happen in our life. Yes. Sometimes it is the work of the devil. Sometimes he may have just a little piece, some throwing some temptation and you couldn't overcome. And sometimes it's just on you. It's just on you, man. You know, you have to be able to look at yourself. You see what I'm saying? Um, and I don't think that's what the, the people are doing. They don't look on, on themselves. Yeah. But then at the same time, yeah. I'm not sure if I should throw the gravel and into the mouths of the people that that, 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 that normally gets that that, that yeah. normally sucks the lollipop and you know and, <laughs> and it's got a sweet tooth. You mean like they want they want sweet stuff. They don't want water, they don't want yeah. truth, they want lies, they want things that sound sweet, that feel sweet. Sure We're here to tell you the mm. truth, right? There are other stories mm. like even when we go into like the story of Saul, right? Mm. Sometimes again it could just be you and it's based on instruction. What did you do? You know, there's jo- uh, Jonah in the belly of the well. Yeah, yeah. He went into the he went into the belly of the well because he was given an instruction yeah, yeah. and he chose not to abide. Mm, mm. Right? Saul. Uh, we w- we're gonna go to Saul. So yeah, yeah. let's go to Saul eighteen. Saul. Saul eighteen verse ten. First Samuel. Chapter. I'm saying Saul eighteen verse ten. <laughs> <laughs> My mind's running fast. It's just running. It's like. Yeah, so first Samuel chapter 18, verse 10. Yeah. Yeah, go. Go need to read it. Yeah. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. Listen to that. Mm. The evil spirit from God came upon Saul. What did the devil have to do? When we read devil, Satan, Lucifer, any of those words, we haven't seen it. Nothing and he prophesied mm. in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand, and at the other times. Um, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand, and Saul cast the javelin. For he said, I will smite David, even to the wall with it, and David avoided it out of his presence twice. Now there's a reason for this, mm-hmm. right? So let's go back. Right, we to need 15. to go back yeah, to 15. 15, 1. 15, verse 1. Read it, read it. Yeah. Okay. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to appoint thee to be king over, Is- mm-hmm. over his people, over Israel. So very, very, just as a, a separate lesson, the Lord sent me to be king over his people, the Lord's people, which mm. is Israel, right? Food for thought, right? Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and mm. utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and women, infant and suckling, Ox and sheep, camel and ass. And again, go to the perspective of Amalek. 
Mm. But they, they, they must have been like, man, what's Satan doing unto us, man? Because they have their God. Yeah, As you yeah. said, they have their God. Yeah. They must have been like, what's Satan doing? Oh, yeah. Man, the devil, man, he works hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but was it the devil? No. Yeah. It was the God of Israel who gave us an instruction. And Saul, verse 4, gathered the people together and numbered them in Tel in, in Telaim. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Canaanites, Go, depart, and get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when ye came up out of Egypt. So he gave them a chance, the Kenites, right? That was fine. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. The Amalekites was the target. That was the target mission, not the Kenites, right? And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag the king from, from the, um, of the Amalekites alive. So I'll read that again. Mm. And he took Agag the king of the Amalekites alive when his instruction was to kill mm. and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Verse 9. Mm. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, and the oxen, and of the fatlings, and of the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile, refused, and refused that destroyed utterly. But what was his instruction? Mm. His instruction was in verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek, and, destroy, and utterly destroy, destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay mm. both yeah. man, women, infant, suckling, oxen, ox, Sheep, camel, and ass. Okay, but what has the the animals got to do with anything? That's true. What were they thinking? <laughs> what, what were they thinking? <laughs> no, but seriously, what right. what what has the animals got to do with mm. anything? It just goes to show that the God of Israel, when he wants this thing wiped out, he wants it wiped out. He don't care for the food. He don't care for the people. He don't care. Just do your job, just like the um, just like the the angel, yeah, just that just like the angel of the Lord, um, with David when David numbered Israel. The God of Israel sees his servants like that, so he's expecting the angel of the Lord to just go down there and wipe out, and the angel of the Lord does his job. He does it so great that the God is going to be like, oh wait 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 wait, <laughs> no 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 no, you did it too good, like like. Uh, uh, like you, you, you were doing it too quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's so fast. That it's like he could have wiped out the whole nation quick just like that. So no, 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 stop, 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 stop. But he followed the instructions and he did it. So he's thinking now, Israel cried out for a king, they get Saul. So he's saying, okay, so Saul, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go into that land because of what the Amalekites did. Mm -hmm. I want you to go into that land, I want you to kill everything. Yeah. Yeah? Saul's thinking, okay, yeah, I'm going to kill everything. But you know what? Let me keep the best. You know, for the God of Israel and, and, and like do the sacrifice. No, that's not the really instruction that I gave you. Yeah. So and he then, probably had good intentions, right? It was good because intentions, he, but good yeah. intentions doesn't exactly it, it, it doesn't mean anything when it comes down to yeah. instructions. Yeah. But yeah. as you said, then this whole topic is about Oh, an instruction is better than sacrifice. Yeah. But as you said, it's the whole thing about do you play the part yeah. in this? But yeah, that's a different lesson. We we yeah, we're discussing today mm. who whose hand was that yeah. at? Was that of the Lord's hand yeah. or was that of Satan's hand? And here's where we we're, we're showing you that don't just blame everything in your life right mm -hmm. on Satan. It's not. Saul here had a decision to make. He was given an instruction. Mm -hmm. He was told go in there and kill everything, mm -hmm. everything, man, woman, ox, sheep, camel, ass, every everything. Wipe it all. He spared the king. He spared, what did he spare? The best of the sheep, the oxen, yeah, the fat yeah. the lambs, and all that was good. And <laughs> verse 10 says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. He's, 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 he yeah, wants to backtrack yeah, yeah, yeah. now. He's upset. Why did I make this guy king? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even what I'm saying, Why did I make man? this guy king? <laughs> he doesn't follow instructions. For he is turned back from following me. And hath not performed my commandments. Mm. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. So what he's saying about commandments, also, you know, you, just, you could just jump into one lesson and then to nothing. Yeah, so many lessons. lessons. <laughs> like, like commandments, he did not follow my commandments. Mm. The, 
Israelite nation lives by the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Amen. That's what we live by. We follow the Bible to the T. This is our book. This is what this is. This, this is us. This is how, this. This is what we live by. Yeah. What commandments did the guys on Instagram follow? Absolutely <laughs> zero in the crying about Satan. But then again, it just goes. <laughs> it goes back to um, who was it given to, right? Which is a whole other lesson. Yeah. As we've said earlier, the books. The, mm. the instruction was given to Moses, and he was told go to the children of Israel. Mm. So if you're not serving, or if you're not under that law, if you're not under the law, statutes, and the commandments, then that's you, right? But when we go back now, just one more story before, because mm. we have 15 minutes left. One more story before we wrap up. Um, it's a story that uh, Pre Samuel briefly read in the Feast of Dedication, but we want to touch it and apply it to this to this lesson, right? And oh, that oh, is Haggai. Just, just, just. Just quickly read sixteen verse. I'll just quickly quickly read sixteen verse one. Um, and this is this is just about Saul. Saul again. It says, it says, and the Lord said unto Samuel, mm -hmm. How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him? I have rejected Saul. This was once the king <laughs> of Israel. Yeah, um, I've rejected him from reigning over Israel. Film one home with all on go. Mm. Yeah, so he's so he rejected him, so and he put the evil spirit in him, and then you've got the whole and then obviously you get David that comes along afterwards. And um David's just a little boy, but then the David loves the God of Israel, and at this time the God of Israel's not listening to Saul, so therefore Israel in a whole is just like on a damper. That's why when Goliath came now, everybody was everybody was scared. That's what everyone shook. <laughs> Everybody was everybody was scared. Nobody wanted to go yeah. up. They yeah. they they knew that the God of Israel wasn't following Saul. Mm. They could on pray to the God of Israel. No prayers was getting answered. Saul must have been burning sacrifices and doing everything to to try and get the God of Israel to, to listen to him. And the God of Israel wasn't having it. Mm. And then and then you get David that comes along. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, David comes along and just mm. and and the yeah. little boy and just shows Israel that the God of Israel. Is with you, yeah, one hundred percent. But you've got to learn to do certain things, yeah, one hundred percent. But I don't know how long we've got. So we got we got rough, roughly around like thirteen minutes left. Oh, okay. So um, okay. So I want to read the story to you again, just to drive home this point again before we conclude that it is not always the hand of the devil. Mm. It can be other factors. Mm. Can be the God of Israel punishing us for what for our wrongdoings, as he said, he will punish us for our iniquities, right? Mm. So Haggai, Haggai chapter 1, says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of, of uh, Shetiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Joseph, the high priest, saying, Thus speak of the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, mm -hmm. and this house lie waste? So it's a question. You guys have your houses. Mm -hmm. The Lord's house is lying waste. So just I'm setting a story for you, right? They're saying, oh, well, the house is, the time has not come yet that the Lord's house should be built. So let's, let's work on our own. Let's do our own thing, mm -hmm. and that, that will come, right? So the word of the Lord came to Haggai, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have so much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Mm. So Priest Andrew's already explained this when he said, you know, you eat, mm. but you're not full. You drink, mm. but it's not enough. You clothe you, you're not warm mm. enough. You earn wages and it's like going into a bag that has a mm. hole and blows away in the wind because the Lord's house mm. is lying waste. Mm. You, you're not thinking about the Lord. You're so set on your own mm. goals and aspirations that you forget. Mm. Right? Verse 8. Go up to the mountain 
and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, say of the Lord. And you'll see why we've read the scripture today. Ye looked for much and lo, it came to little. And when he brought it home, I did blow upon it. Mm. So you brought home your, your good yeah, things yeah, you brought, yeah. and, the, and the God of Israel blew upon it yeah. so that it disappears. Mm. And you're looking around like, man, yeah, sure I had like, like how much money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I had all this, this, this good stuff, this blessings, right? But the God of Israel blew upon it to go. Did Satan blow upon it to go? Mm. But in the story of Job, when you go back to Job, it was mm. at Satan's hand that his, his mm. house fell and his children died and, mm. and all those things. Mm. But here, it wasn't. It had nothing to do with Satan. It was because of our actions. We put the God of Israel's house on a back burner. Yeah, and we're trying to build up our own. And try to focus on ourselves. Mm. Exactly. So, look at what the God of Israel is saying. I did blow upon it. I'm halfway through verse 9. Why? Let me read it again. You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste. Mm. And ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, And the earth is stayed from her fruit. Listen to what he is. Mm. Listen to what our God is saying. And I called for a drought upon the land. Listen. Mm. Satan didn't do this stuff. Satan didn't uh, make the heaven over you stay from dew, or, or, or the earth to stay from her fruit. Or a drought upon the mm. land. And upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, mm. and upon the labour of the hands. They must have been thinking, wow, mm. what's going on? It's mm. not raining, nothing's growing, our cattle are not, nothing's, nothing is becoming fruitful, nothing's manifesting, nothing's growing, what's going on? Is it the mm. devil? Is he doing this to us? No, why are you giving him so much power? Yeah, it's true. You get what I mean? He does have power. You can't, take, power, it, you can't yeah. take it away from him. But why, why are you giving him so much? Mm. The God of Israel has punished us mm. time and time again yeah. because of our disobedience. Right. That's all, what, that's, that's, that's all, that. what, all what it comes down to. Yeah. And yeah, Satan doesn't have, have anything to do with it. As we read, and I'm sure you, there's plenty more other scriptures as to where Satan has his hand in it, but it's to big fish, it's to big, it's, it's to main people that's going to affect the whole of Israel. And bring down this army. And this bring house. down everything, like, that's who he's going to go for. He's going to go for, for like, <laughs> and that's why he's it not going to go for, wrestle, for, for, yeah. for any, anyone, yeah. That's why it says we wrestle. Mm. Not against flesh and blood, but against prince, uh, uh, spiritual wickedness mm. and principalities in high mm. places. Or the other way around. Principalities mm. and spiritual wickedness in high places. It's that fight that he mm. has against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. He's trying to he's trying to cut out. It's like if you got a, mm. if you if you know you you you're fighting someone who's a, say you're gonna go up against a, a fight with someone who's a basketball player. Your aim is to break his fingers. You're, 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 <laughs> his knees. Yeah, or his knees, right? You go up against a football player, mm. you're aiming to break his legs. Yeah, yeah. You, you're taking out, you're trying to take out his mm. army, right? Mm. So we, Israel, wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and principalities, mm. against things, the, the, the prince yeah, of the yeah. air, right? It's not, because it's we just, are part of the God of Abraham, mm. Isaac, and Jacob's army. It's not, it's, it's not the world. And as we, as we read already, we read mm. about the seven nations greater Mm. Them seven nations, they've got their God, they've got their establishment, they've got their the 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 building for their for their God. Mm. You see, what I'm saying yeah. like, like when um, certain places in London, you see big shrines, mm. you see massive massive shrines, um, and that's all built up. They've 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 got their things. Yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying? So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And and so we're, we're going to wrap this up now because we've got roughly about seven minutes left. Mm. But I guess what, what we really mm. kind of want to, the point to drive home this, is... This is the is, gravel. This might be the gravel. Yeah. Is that, is that uh, you know, if Satan does not have a hand in every single bad thing that goes wrong in your life. Mm. You are a factor. It's always you. Like, everyone has choices to make right and how we kind of see it is mm. is that for you to be tempted that temptation of someone has to be against something so they've mm. got to be tempting you against 
something that you're supposed to live by, some way yeah. that you're supposed mm. to live by. So if you have mm. no way that you're supposed to live, to live by, and you're just living, you're just going with, you're just living mm. with vibes. It's just vibes all the time, mm. vibes, and, vibes and money. Then, then mm. why, what's he tempting you? You've already gone. Mm. You, you have nothing. You're, you're not influential in that mm. fight. You're not influential in that fight. You're just a bystander. Mm. You get know what I mean? But those that are influential, those that have ways to live as we do, the, we have the laws, the statutes and the commandments. If you are someone that agrees that you have laws, statutes and commandments to live by, then you need to follow that. And yes, you are going to be influential in stopping that. Satan will be influential in stopping that. But you also, sorry, you also have that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but if you, if you live by laws, statutes and commandments, you don't only have to be Israel. Exactly, exactly. You can't be um, any other mm -hmm. nation yeah. Or, yeah. or people. So every single one of them people that are on Instagram, mm. whoever said whatever, they they're not following by they're not following the laws, the statutes, and commandments of these of these scriptures. And as you say that, it's the perfect time to say because we mm. don't want to exclude you. If anyone's like, well, but well, I claim to you know, but mm. I want to keep and stuff like. If you formally want to join. The Israelite Nation mm. Worldwide Ministries. There is a link in the bio, and you can come um, learn with us, sit with us, become a brethren, break mm. bread, sup, baptize, all that kind of, all those kind of things, and you will be under the law, statutes, and the mm. commandments. You get a full understanding, isn't it? and the full understanding, one hundred percent. So even when you go back and just touch in uh, James one again, just to close up with it. He said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Verse 12. James 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Mm -hmm. Let no man mm -hmm. say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Mm -hmm. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth yeah. death. So as it says, everyone mm. is tempted, mm. but that next step is you. Mm. You can be tempted, but blessed is the man that endureth the temptation. Because if everyone was going to be tempted and they were just going to give in, then they wouldn't say that. It would just say, mm. Uh, blessed is every man because every man is tempted mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. I know your heart so mm -hmm. you know those that have a nice heart you're fine it doesn't say that mm -hmm. it's blessed is the man that endureth temptation mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. Elder Jason urged you to go and read the story of Job mm -hmm. and see what happened because that was a perfect and upright man and oh. I won't say what happened with him but because I want you to you read have to, you have to also mm -hmm. realise is that Mm. Everything that we've written inside this book was about Israel. Mm. It's about the Israel, and it's about the God of Israel. It's about the God of Israel and His people, and mm. and, and that's it. And that's why, mm. that's why we put inside the scriptures about the other nations yeah. that they had their own God, they had their own setup, they had their own thing. This mm. is to do with the God of Israel and His people. So we live by the laws, statutes, and commandments. So, as Jaden said, like for you to get tempted, it would have to be for something. Against something, yeah, yeah, it would have to be against a way of this, life, uh, a way of life. life against something to to, to deter you from doing that thing. Yeah, from that and the only life. reason why he would tempt you, mm. right, from doing something evil is if you're serving the true and living God, Amen. which is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. If yeah. you're not serving that, then he has no yeah. business trying to tempt you in you doing anything at all. He don't, yeah. he don't care for you. You you're just living in the earth like the Jebusites and the the, the, the Hittites. Yeah. I think I think um, everyone uses this word normalize, so I'm gonna use it now. I think we need to normalize. This is what I think we need to normalize. We need to normalize not blaming Satan for mm. every wrong thing that mm. happens in your life. That's what we need to normalize, mm. right? Because personally, what um, what I feel, and I'm sure that Jason's on the same page with me, is when you blame. Satan for everything, blame him for this, blame him for that, that, this, 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 mm. this, and this. Mm. You just take away accountability mm. from yourself. Mm. You're not holding yourself responsible mm. for the actions that you do. Mm. Every day is just Satan and vibes. Like, mm. no, you need to take accountability for your actions. 
Every minute we point the finger at Satan, Satan, he did this, or he's the reason I lost my job, he's the reason I, uh, you know, I didn't get this house, or I lost my house because, as you said, I weren't paying my mm-hmm. bills. Mm-hmm. Whose fault is that? Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? He's the reason why the God of Israel... Pun- Sometimes it is on us. We need to, as... as, as um, we always hear here in this nation, when you point the finger at someone, you have four pointing back at you. You have four fingers pointing back at you. And that's for you to take that accountability and analyze your actions. You know, even when you go back to Joel, his children died. Everything died, his, his house, his, his field, everything went. And what does it say? He said, even in death, he did not charge God foolishly, but he said, naked I come, naked I go. God giveth, God taketh away. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, he... And it goes back to the lesson of Elder Kurt when Elder Kurt and uh, New York, New Jersey brought gave the lesson mm. on the nature of man. Mm. We need uh, the nature of us to be righteous and to not to, to even mm. even act as Job acted, you know. Things went wrong in his life, and the first thing he did was look to his own actions, how he mm. can how what he did wrong, what could he do, how he can repent, how he can um, beg for forgiveness from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see what I'm saying? But this nature of us blaming uh, Satan for everything is taken away accountability, is taken away you being responsible for your own actions. But a lot of people do that because they have no understanding. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why we're here, right? That's why the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries is here to teach you, to give you the word, to give you the truth. And and as we said, sometimes the truth may not always be pleasing to the ear, but the truth is the truth. Um, and running from that means that you run to the light. And none of us want to run to the light, right? So we hope that you continue on this journey um, here with the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. We hope you enjoyed our lesson. Throw some sevens, throw some fires in the chat. We hope that you stick with us. We hope that you understand that it's not always Satan, but we, even it's a reminder for me, it's a reminder for Elder Jason, that we all need to take accountability for our actions, you know? So look at what we could do wrong, because only then will you do right. Um, anything you want to add over Jason? No, that's it. You said enough. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that, uh, we say peace. peace. Quite visual, spirit never physical Only in celestial form, I'm terrestrial Breath of life Blown through his merciful nostrils How can I be hostile when I speak the gospel? Holy Ghost Festival Israel is the refuge, Christ is the hospital And I need some patience, no time for wasting Evil will receive evils, my equation God of Israel is my king I'm anticipating And I've learned that you never ever cease learning Fire still burning, heathen still cursing It's imminent, we stand strong and never broke Still missing memories of the saints fallen Tears reflect crying, throats still be choking Many are called but who's worthy of the chosen? Doctrine, the King James Version Rare like a marital a virgin it Excuse me, I beg your pardon I ain't no Christian Never eating swine But it don't make me Muslim My form like God's favour King David I strive to constrive a psalm Of the ancient Instructed My style's constructed I am monkey Never praying like no mantis I'll give you a man's fist Speak lies to an Israelite Now that's ludicrous Foolish Come let me school this Knock knock on your door Screaming who is this? Who that? Check it but it ain't J. Cole, yeah. Muhammad or that crazy witness, Nicole yeah. I roll with the number seven, who are in heaven My father, the God of Jacob, my secret weapon We serve you, I serve you
visual. 